10 o'clock last night, another twist, an EFL statement on Derby County. What looked to me to be nothing more than a managed Q&A session mm. with the man at the top, the EFL chief executive, a man we usually respect and you know very well, Trevor Birch. Yeah. But, I mean, this seems now... We, we now see the EFL's had no proof of funding from the administrators. Various things remain yeah. unresolved. You have to unpack that, though, and what that actually means. Well, let's unpack it. Yeah. Where are we at with this? I mean... This is now desperate. Where you're at with it is, I mean, I've spoken to all the parties in one capacity or another, whether it's Middlebrook, Middlebrook at the top of the tree, whether it's the administrator or whether it's the EFL, to try and get a better understanding of the landscape. And also having lost a club to administration and bought a club from administration, I understand the administration process and also understand the Football League's parameters on these sort of scenarios. First and foremost, after the ESL, you've got a temperature raise on what fans want to know and how they want to know it and what their entitlement is to understand certain things. So you're seeing it at Birmingham, you're seeing it at a load of other football clubs. Yeah. In this instance, what the administrator has done, what's happened is that it's gone into administration in September. With due respect to Mel, who I like, Derby took some pretty strong liberties... Um, financially and with their accountancy and also with their deferral of tax over the 18-month period when taxes were allowed to be deferred by HMRC and then dumped it into administration in September after not paying any tax for 18 months. So the backdrop is not good. But the bottom line is they went into an administration without guaranteed funding so the administrator already told the EFL that we, we are capable of running this business, but we don't have guarantees of funding. We've got assurances and undertakings, but we don't have guarantees. They've now come into January when you go into administration, you're allowed to be in administration for a maximum period of 18 months, right, before you find yourself in a situation where the EFL put the hammer down saying this administration needs to be concluded. What they've asked them for, again, is an assurance of funding because they're responding to the fact that Derby don't want to sell players, don't want to do certain things, and they haven't got a bidder across the line. So they, they can see out the season. So they can see out the season. But they're not suggesting, the EFL are not telling anybody that they're going to close Derby down this season. What they're potentially saying is, if you don't give us surety of funding, we are not going to let you start the 22-23 season because this season is already underway. They're already in administration. The EFL have already allowed this to continue and fixtures have been played. So this is not, there is, a, there is an immediate jeopardy because... Andy Hoskins has got to find funding. Right. Now, I think he'll cobble together funding. I think he'll find a way to hotchpotch through the season if he's forced to do that. But in the meantime, what he's got to do is zero down on a buyer. They've got two bid do bidders in the equation, as you can see from the EFL. And what the EFL have done here, it's not an orchestrated Q&A. What it is, is lifting all the information. And I'm not a messenger for the EFL. I've spent more time vilifying the EFL than I've done anything else while I've been on this radio station. But let's be clear what this is. Mm. This is the EFL trying to catch every single question that's been asked through social media, through fans groups, through the media full stop, right. and then put it into a framework to answer these questions comprehensively with Trevor Birch, who, by the way, who is an administrator himself by profession, so understands the landscape of what he's talking about probably better than anybody else in okay, football. Okay, Having you. taken Portsmouth out of administration, yeah. been, been the architect of the reasons why Chelsea were bought by Abramovich, and on and on we go. Well, right? you'd admit this is unusual, wouldn't you, though? Do you know why it's unusual? Because night. the EFL are, 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 are a Luddite organisation that don't think clearly and concisely, and with Trevor Birch in place, they're now trying to adapt the circumstances to fit the purpose. They know the landscape has changed, they know, yeah. the, they know the clubs have been in become incredibly difficult they started to sue one another left right and centre after mm. Covid because they're all trying to reclaim some land and reclaim some finances so he's now saying the one thing the EFL has been, been guilty of perhaps in the past before I got there is not communicating with people right. so here's your communication I've got so, you and I accept that the EFL have given the administrators a new deadline on the 1st of February Simon there's one massive stumbling block and we've touched on it before question 5 that Birch answered last night why is the EFL allowed Middlesbrough and Wickham to threaten legal action against Derby not, County and this is is this not, preventing the sale their, of the club it's not their gift in the rules but the, no buyer wants to buy the club while Burr and Wickham are doing well, what they're doing let me tell you what it is right? the EFL have if a club wants to take action against another club, there is a process called arbitration which they have the right to enact. Now, the bottom line is, is that Middlesbrough, whether you like it or you don't, and by the way, Wickham haven't launched an arbitration. Wickham, Wickham have put a pre-action protocol suggesting they're going to, but they haven't done it yet. Right. But Middlesbrough have done it because they have their own grievances, whether you like it or you don't, and I have mixed emotions about what Steve is doing, but the bottom line is they have a grievance about the way that Derby operated. And they now, want compensation. Now, the arbitration process is nothing to do with the Football League. It's a rule. It then goes off to an independent body, and what the issue is, is Andy, with God love him, and I do love him as an administrator, as much as I love administrators, because get solutions done has misread the room he think he thought he could press gang uh, Middlesbrough and Wickham into the this is a spurious claim you have no grounds for it but 
The bottom line is, is the arbitration is the determiner for that. And the arbitration has been sat there for 12 months with the administrator and Steve Gibson sat there waiting for a determination. And really, Andy Hoskins probably now has to get Gibson, whether he likes it or he doesn't, Gibson and possibly Wickham into a room and horse trade this out. What do they want? How much does Gibson want? No, that's that's for Steve to say to them. But well, uh, but Sam, it's, you it's must set, know, it's I, been I, reported. Look, it's I mean, been I'm, reported forty million. Well, it's not that because we, you know, it's not because I spoke to people last week and I spoke to people at Middlesbrough. So and it's it, not forty and million. And it's never at once come from their mouths, from their mouths, that they want forty-five million pounds. That's a product of someone else's imagination. So what does he want? He wants to be engaged with properly by the administrator, who believed what Andy's done, and it's very simple. He believed that he could he could suppress this claim under something called compression. He could get it out of the door as an unsecured creditor and not a football creditor, and it wouldn't have to be dealt with. And he sold it to the new purchasers as that. And then what's happened is new purchasers now believe they haven't got to deal with this, and then they're being told, actually, they might have to deal with it. So they're now saying to the administrator, I'm not going to pay for something I don't want to have to pay for. And he's got to repackage this. And, I, and he's perfectly capable of doing it. He's got to find a mechanism to be able to 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 get the price point that Gibson and I don't want to use the word shakedown because I like Steve, but he's leveraging the situation. There's a leverage here. But because, is he right to? Well, they believe. If he's got right to say, well, then he's right to. First and foremost, Derby have behaved pretty poorly, and I like Mel, but they behaved pretty poorly. The way that they accounted for situations with the stadium valuation, I, I argued for that was reasonable because it was silent rules about revaluing fixed assets. But Mel Morris knew that revaluing your players was BS. He knew it, he just wanted to make it fit differently. So by doing that, he has artificially affected other football clubs because the outcomes that Derby had prejudiced other football clubs, specifically Middlesbrough, because players signed for Derby that were going to Middlesbrough and Mel hijacked them because he was able to do it because financial fair play hadn't been breached because Mel changed the accounting policy that he knew he couldn't do. So with all things being equal, Derby behaved badly first. Then Middlesbrough sat there with Steve Gibson, who's a man of integrity, going, I'm not, oh, yeah, having, I like I'm not having that. I like and the reasons why other clubs haven't done it are the same reasons when I took Ian Dowie to court for fraud because a manager behaved appallingly. Everyone went, why are you doing that? When I won a million quid compensation, everyone we should do that with our managers. It's about sticking your head above the parapet and have the courage of your convictions. Wickham and Middlesbrough feel wronged. Now, whether the arbitration process, what I think the EFL should do is say an arbitration process has to have a time limit. If you haven't concluded an arbitration process, within year. 12 months then it runs its course right. but then you've got the argument that people will delay and people will procrastinate yeah. so the EFL are caught in a difficult situation but this is nothing to do with the EFL wanting to liquidate right. Derby so Derby fans are saying this morning look at the messages Simon they say what does it boil down to does it boil down to this Pay Gibson. by the 1st of February Pay Gibson. No, no, no. get an amount that's agreeable with no. Gibson no, at Middlesbrough and the administrator and get them paid. In an ideal world, yes, because ultimately what the administrator is not doing is selling players um, and giving the EFL a blueprint for the way that they're going to fund going forward. But he didn't give them a definitive blueprint when he took on the job. Right. He took the job on the basis, I think that we can cobble it. And Mel Morris might have to come to the party a little bit more. If Mel Morris wants to be facilitating a solution, then the stadium has to be looked at, how the property company was set up for the stadium. There's a whole raft of things that need to be done here. But this isn't a drop dead on the 1st of February, in my view. I may be wrong, but I don't think I am. This is not a drop dead on the 1st of February. So why issue a deadline? Because that's what they do. That's how administrations are supposed to be run. You can't let an administration just just meander on. You have to bring it to a, some sort of conclusion. How many times have you seen football clubs being given deadlines that they haven't completed with and then there's an extension? We oh, saw I agree. Bolton happen. We saw it happen with Bolton about five, six, yeah, seven yeah. times, didn't we? Yeah, I know, but D the fans Darby, are having heart attacks all over the place. Well, they, I mean, they're going to have... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Derby fans, but unfortunately, once upon a time, you liked Mel. And you allowed Mel, to some extent, to run your football club. Not that you could do much about it. And the sins of Mel, as much as I like him, are being visited on a bad process. And the administrator's got a very, very difficult job. He has boxed himself in a little bit, but he's got the wherewithal to unbox himself. And it's going to have to be... a from Gibson. He's going to have to have a horse trade with Gibbo. He's going to have to have a horse trade with them. Where are you going to get the money from? The buyer. It was always going to be the buyer that pays it because the buyer's going to have to accept that to buy Derby County, a football club that's going to have 20... They might even stay in this bloody division. It's going to have 28,000 fans filling Pride Park every single week with a training ground, a stadium. Yeah. They haven't got much of a squad, but they've got a name. But that's so why Kirchner said thanks, no thanks. Yeah, I'm but Kirchner here. was taking the mickey. Kirchner is a billionaire that was having a petted lip because he couldn't get what he wanted when he wanted. He saw he was sold something and ultimately he suddenly realised that maybe I can get this cheaper and also possibly... 
you told me I wouldn't have to deal with this debt. Yeah. And so Andy's got to pull it back, not bend over, but he's got to find a solution. And he'll find a solution. But it's yeah. not easy, but I, I really think Derby fans are not helping by becoming enraged by the processes because the processes are the processes. And it was your owner... But it's their club, Simon. I know, but... They you, haven't got Derby into but, this but position. There's, but there's no point barking at the moon. There's no point suggesting that the EFL have got a conspiracy. I mean, you know, you know my view on the EFL. With the exception of Trevor Birch, they can all go burn. But the bottom line is, is that the EFL are not sitting here trying to liquidate this club. There are opportunities for them to involve themselves in certain situations, but they cannot circumvent an arbitration process that so one club's called upon another. We're going to get a few Derby fans on. Yeah, I mean, you've been quite heavy with them this morning. And I, I don't think, if it, not that it will bother you, but I don't think many of them are all that happy about some of the things you've said about the supporters. It's not the supporters their, are brilliant. Simon, it's not their fault they're in this predicament. I'm not blaming the supporters. Is the bottom line as we go to this break to simplify it before some of the fans come on? Hosking, administrator man, has got to get a price from Gibson. Agreed. Then progress can be made. He's either got, he's got two things to do. He's either got to find the funding to get to the end of the season and push Gibson back in his seat and go right I'll see you in arbitration and we're going to have arbitration in three months time now we're going to go at it it's a spurious claim it's full of whatever and I'm going to have you for it and then once I've got my judgement I'm going to take it back to the football league and say you now adjudicate this is not a football creditor go away Middlesbrough All right? but the bottom line is if, they, if, they want it, if they've got a preferred bidder in now to do it now the second alternative is the preferred bidder's got to up his price by the nature of what Andy Hoskins can negotiate with his chin with people like Steve Gibson alright Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker, TalkSport.